Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShark.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is merely uh, an assembly video uh, slash demonstration video uh, for one of our 555 timer kits. Uh, I'm going to show you how to put it together piece by piece. And so when you purchase this, if you purchase this specific kit, then you can put it together yourself using this video as a guide. Anyhow, let me show you the parts that are included. First of all, I'm sorry about the lighting. The lighting isn't great in here. Uh, you've got two 10K multi-turn uh, variable resistors, a 1.5K ohm resistor, a uh, header connector, two uh, 0 0.1 microfarad capacitors, uh, a 10 nanofarad capacitor, all ceramic, your 555 timer and your socket, your 8-pin socket, two 100 microfarad, microfarad ele electrolytic capacitors and a 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and a header board that we will break up into pieces as we go along. Now first of all, we're going to solder in our variable resistors, our resistor, and our electrolytic capacitors. So I'll be talking about that right now. Now the ceramic capacitors and the um, and the re single resistor, they're not polarized. It doesn't matter which way they go in, as long as they go into the right place. So R3 is our 1.5K ohm resistor slots right here, labeled 1.5K R3. Uh, place that place the resistor into those two holes. Uh, it doesn't matter which way you put it in because again they're not polarized. These, there's two slots for the 104 capacitors which are which are the uh, 0 0.1 microfarad capacitors uh, labeled 104 and that's C1 labeled C1 104 labeled, uh, right here and um, right here which is the secondary 104 and right at the, on the left hand side, the leftmost is labeled C3102 so place your tiny little ceramic capacitor labeled 102 right here in the C3 slot now the multi-turns uh, they are placed in these two slots make sure that the top turning screw, the little gold silver turning screw is facing the right from this perspective in both of them now, if that's a little bit ambiguous, wait until the next step because you'll see them soldered in place. Next, we'll be doing our electrolytic capacitors and our uh, diode, or our LED, rather. Now, this might be a little bit hard for you to see, but first of all, we'll do the diode. Notice that the, or sorry, the LED. The LED uh, has a, uh, a long lead and a short lead. The long lead is the positive, the short lead is the negative. From this perspective, uh, the LED, labeled D1, is right here. The positive lead, the long lead, goes on the right-hand side. The negative lead, the shorter lead, goes on the left-hand side. So make sure that you don't turn that around or else it will never light up. And it will light up when you apply power to the board. Now for the three electrolytic capacitors. They are C5, C6, and C4. And you'll notice that on each of the footprints, there's a white side and then there's a black side. Uh, the white side is your negative. Now, if you look on the electrolytics, there's actually a white stripe on it facing the, lo the shorter lead. The shorter lead is your negative side, so you want to make sure that your shorter lead goes into the side of the footprints with the white coloring in them, and that your positive leads go into the, uh, the, the blue sides. So, in this case, the, 100, the first 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, C5, I'll place the positive lead on the left and my negative lead on the right. And I will follow suit for C6 except for I will put my negative lead for C4 on the left and my positive lead on the right. And then for, um, sorry that was C6, C4 my negative lead goes on the right and my positive lead goes on the left. So after you're done soldering those in place, make sure that you, you make sure you double check this. This is very important because if you apply power, you may pop these uh, if you've placed them incorrectly. Because if you if you apply power uh, uh, to the wrong leads to a capacitor, if you have it reversed, pop. And it's never good to pop those. So be very careful. Uh, next, we will do our uh, headers. An easy step, but you have some options. What I did was I took the header, and you'll actually have some leftovers from this, uh, including some extra just in case. Uh, break break your header down using some wire cutters very easily into uh, two sections of four and one section of three. The one section of three will be placed on the right-hand side from this perspective for your power, ground, and output pins. Now, um, these two are put together on these two rails of four. Um, you want to make sure that when you solder them, them into place, now there's absolutely no shorts, uh, otherwise your circuit will not work correctly. 
when you have this into place, soldered into place, you can use this header to uh, on these these rails of four to choose your different ranges of output frequencies. Now, again. Uh, this video is uh, assembly only. I have another video showing you how it works. So we will do a quick test at the end, but as for dem a demonstration video, I have a separate demonstration video that goes through uh, exactly how the circuit works on its own. So um, solder those all into place, and then place your header on so on one of the uh, one of the sections so that uh, you don't lose it. Because if you lose that, you're going to have to use a wire to connect it, and it's going to get messy. So after we're done this step, we're going to plug in our, uh, we're going to wire in our uh, socket, and then we're going to put in our uh, LM555 timer, and then we're going to give it a quick test. Now just so you have a, uh, a better view, I've got it propped up. Now the LM555 timer footprint has a notch on the left-hand side. The socket has a notch on the left-hand side. The 555 timer itself has a notch on the left-hand side. Match them up from a bird's eye view. If you if you place the 555 timer in, in backwards, you're going to fry it. So make sure that the now notch in the socket is facing left from this perspective, and that when you place the 555 timer in, it is facing left as well. So out of that into place, make sure there's no shorts. Then we'll give it a quick test. There we go. I've got nine volts connected to the uh, power rail to, to VCC and ground. The output pin is there. I've got nothing connected to it because I've got this set to one of the lower frequencies. Uh, as you can see, that is the output frequency. I can tune it using these two uh, variable resistors that represent RA and RB. And yeah, so very easy to put together. And uh, if you watch the demonstration video, it shows you how to change the output voltage between 1 hertz and 500 kilohertz. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone.